We begin tonight with what we have learned about the lengths the Renner family reportedly went to to hide Talon Renner's involvement in Preston Lord's death. The 16 year old was beaten after a Halloween party in October and died days later. His death leading to a massive investigation in the East Valley and ultimately seven arrests for the murder. We are going through the more than 1,000 page police report and learning people close to the Renner family say they made moves to conceal Talon's injuries and Talon himself. Yeah, true crime correspondent Brianna Whitney has been following this story for us. So Brianna, why are details like this so important for this case? Yeah, it could change the outcome of the case. Talon Renner is one of the suspects charged with first degree murder. None of the suspects stayed at the scene to help Preston Lord and the lack of remorse was evident in the police report. But some actions appear to go beyond that. One police interview with a close family friend reveals what appears to be a decision by the Renner family to hide the injuries Talon had after the attack on Preston Lord. One of the most revealing interviews police did shed light into suspect Talon Renner's family history. According to the report, Talon's father, Travis Renner, had a longtime girlfriend who was close with the family. Though they broke up prior to the attack on Preston Lord, she still had access to Travis's credit card history. She told police after the deadly assault, Talon was taken to the family cabin in Sholo, about three hours away from where they live. She went on to say while Talon was at the cabin, she was messaging him on Snapchat. Talon sent her a photo of himself walking the family dog, Gucci. She told police she could tell by the photo that his jaw was swollen. The ex-girlfriend then told police the attorney advised the runners to let Talon's hands heal before bringing him back into town. The woman described Talon as an angry kid and a fighter. She said he holds in a lot of aggression and when he snaps, he snaps. She described Talon as muscular and full of rage. Because she was part of the family for a long time, she told police she cares for Talon and feels bad that he can be misunderstood. But the turning point for her was when she heard about a video surveillance where Talon discusses getting away with it and the incident being, quote, closed casket. Renner, along with the other six suspects, have pleaded not guilty to the crime. None of the suspects' parents have been charged with anything related to Preston Lord's murder so far. So with this family following the advice of the attorney, right, and mm -hmm. driving three hours out, is there any potential that they themselves could face any charges? There could be, uh, but most likely in this case, it would have been that they would have needed to know that the police were looking for them or there was a warrant out or something like that so that there was intentional concealment to uh, hinder the police investigation. Mm -hmm. Without that, it's likely more of an ethical question. And of course, in mm -hmm. the court of public opinion, this looks extremely unethical and really shows a lack of remorse for what happened to Preston. But in, in a sense, legally, they could be clear. They could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the parents could be, the family could be. Um, it's just interesting that this police report of all the suspects, uh, it focuses a lot on the Renner family. There's a lot more even in there that describes kind of their involvement in the community mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. such. And so that's why we wanted to do a story on it because there were other of the suspects who were still going to school. Talon was eventually taken out of school mm -hmm. um, and then didn't go back. So it, it was interesting to, to look at that. But yeah, you have the attorney saying, hide your kid. And, you know, we don't we don't want to see him. Right.